Hi class. So in this video, we're going to continue our discussion of the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory and how we can use Lewis dot structures and this theory to predict molecular geometry. So last time, every example I used only had electron groups that were atoms. They might have been single bonded or double bonded or tripled, but it was always an atom. This particular video is going to discuss when the electron group is a lone pair and how this lone pair not only affects the bond angle, but it also affects the name of the molecular geometry in the molecule. So one of the things I want to first talk about is what is the effect of lone pairs? So lone pairs occupy more space on the central atom because they only sit on the central atom. They are not shared between two other atoms. So that electron pair is not spread out. So you see here, the electrons are shared between two atoms. So it's spread out. With lone pairs, they're sitting on top of one atom. Well, what, how does that influence anything? The effects of the bond angles are now going to be smaller because the lone pairs, this is the key, they, are, they repel stronger. There is a greater repulsion force with lone pairs. So what type of bond angle distortion do I see from lone pairs? So all of these have four electron groups. So in methane, I have four electron groups, but there are four atoms, four hydrogen atoms. If I look at ammonia, I have four electron groups. Now, I don't see it because they're only drawing what's referred to as the molecular geometry. And the molecular geometry only looks at the shape based on the atoms. But remember, if we were to do the Lewis dot structure, nitrogen has an octet because it has three bonds and one lone pair. So in actuality, it's electron groups. There's four of them. The difference is I have only three atoms and one lone pair. It's still four electron groups and its electron geometry is tetrahedral, but its molecular geometry changes. Why? This lone pair repels these angles more, these atoms more, and it squeezes this angle, gives me an angle of 107. Now, I don't want you to memorize 107. I don't. But I want you to recognize that this angle, because of the lone pair, is less than 109.5. Now, if I go to water, okay, H2O, I know that the oxygen likes two bonds and two lone pairs. So what they're not showing you, even though this is derived from the Lewis dot structure, is that this molecule actually has two lone pairs. And again, the lone pairs, because they're not shared and they're closer to the central atom, they repel more than a shared pair in a bond that's spread between two atoms. As a result, we see a squeezing of this bond angle, and we see that it's 104.5. It's actually smaller than 107. Why? Well, instead of one lone pair, there's two lone pairs, which is even greater repulsion. Again, I don't want you to remember these angles. Just want you to remember it's less than 109.5. Where is that 109.5 coming from? The electron geometry of tetrahedral. Now you're going to see that the molecular geometry name changes as well because of the lone pair. So here is a table that you kind of need to know, right? So if I have two electron groups, so I have a central atom with two things attached. You know, it's going to be linear, 180 degrees. And it doesn't matter if there was two things and one of them was a lone pair. So I had an atom and a lone pair. There's only two atoms. That's going to be linear. Where things start to change is when I have three electron groups and four. Okay. So we've already discussed this right here. If I have three electron groups and they're all atoms, they're all bonding groups, both my electron geometry and my molecular geometry are trigonal planar. Why? 
There's three atoms attached. It looks trigonal planar. My bond angle is 120. If I have three electron groups, but only two of them are atoms and one is a lone pair, that's when we see the lone pair start to affect the compound. And what we notice is now there's greater repulsion. So this lone pair causes greater repulsion and my bond angle is less than 120. I still have three groups. That's where I get the bond angle of 120, but it's less than 120 because one of them's a lone pair. And the other thing I want you to notice is the molecular geometry is no longer trigonal planar because molecular geometry only looks at the atoms when giving the name. It's called bent. So it's still an electron geometry of trigonal planar because it has three electron groups, but its molecular geometry is now bent because it only has two atoms and one lone pair. It's the same thing when we go to four electron groups. We've already discussed tetrahedral. So if I have four bonding groups, so no lone pairs, like in the case of methane, my molecular geometry is tetrahedral and my bond angle is 109.5. What happens as soon as I introduce lone pairs? Greater repulsion, the bond angle gets smaller. And as a result, I have less than 109.5. The other thing that I notice, as soon as I have lone pairs, my molecular geometry changes and I'm no longer just tetrahedral for the molecular geometry. Now the molecular geometry takes on new names, trigonal pyramidal and bent. So what do lone pairs do? Lone pairs distort the angles. We see that less than sign and they change the molecular geometry name. So what can you use to help you? Well, this is kind of where I love that FET simulation that I showed you earlier. You can go to FET, go to FET Colorado EDU, go to chemistry, go to the molecular shapes, and now, you see that there is a molecular geometry and an electron geometry. Remember, electron geometry only concerns itself with how many groups in the name. The molecular geometry only looks at the atoms. So if I was to have two bonds, both the electron geometry and the molecular geometry are linear, and the bond angle is 180. If I have three bonds, both the electron geometry and the molecular geometry are trigonal planar and all the angles are 120. But if I change one of the groups from an atom to a lone pair, the angles are gonna change and so is that molecular geometry. So I'm gonna take one of these and remove it and replace it with a lone pair. Now it's actually not showing me the distortion of the angle, but trust me, it does, okay? But what it is showing me is that the molecular geometry is now bent. But I'm telling you this bond angle, because there is greater repulsion, is less than 120. Now, if I remove this, and I go back to three, again, goes back to a molecular geometry of trigonal planar. So that's the thing. The lone pair changes the molecular geometry. Even if I have three electron groups, but one is a lone pair, my molecular geometry changes the bent. We see the same thing happen if I have four. So if I have four, atoms or electron groups. My electron geometry is tetrahedral. My molecular geometry is tetrahedral because the four groups are atoms. If I remove one of the atoms and instead make a group a lone pair, what I notice 
is that my electron geometry is still tetrahedral. That's where the 109.5 is derived from. But my molecular geometry is now trigonal pyramidal. Why is it different? I have a lone pair. If I remove another atom and add another lone pair, oops, I removed both lone pairs, sorry. This is my water, right? This is my water molecule, H2O. It has two uh, uh, hydrogen atoms attached to the oxygen and two lone pairs, but it's no longer a molecular geometry of tetrahedral, it's bent. And that bond angle is now 109.5. And this is the other nice thing. Now that you've used this, you can go to real molecules and click on here, and you can click on H2O. We could show the lone pairs, we can show the bond angles, we can keep the molecular geometry tetrahedral, and we see here what I was saying earlier, that it is not 109.5. Okay, this bond angle is less than 109.5 because the lone pair repulsion. So you can go through this and kind of play around with it. I'm trying to get it where the lone pairs don't quite look like that, but I'm not having much luck. There, that's a little bit better. So there's water. And we see it's less than 109.5. I don't want you to remember 104.5, just 109.5. And we see the molecular geometry is bent. We go to CO2. Well, why are the molecular geometry and the electron geometry the same? Because there are no lone pairs on the central atom. That is the key. There are no lone pairs on the central atom, so the molecular and electron geometry are the same. And the bond angle is 180. If I go to SO2, we see that the bond angle is less than 120. And because there's a lone pair, and the molecular geometry is different than the electron geometry. Again, why? Because there's a lone pair. We didn't show the lone pair. That's what it would look like. And that's why it's called bent. If we go back to water, if you don't show the lone pairs, that molecular geometry looks bent. It's even harder to see that the electron geometry is tetrahedral. When we add the lone pairs, it makes sense because there's four electron groups. When we remove it, now the molecular geometry makes sense. So I hope this video helps you understand both electron geometry, which just looks at the electron groups. So the reason why water's electron geometry is tetrahedral, there's four groups, two lone pairs, two atoms, and to understand that the molecular geometry is different when there's lone pairs because we're only looking at the atoms and this molecule looks bent. All right, and it also has a distorted angle. I hope this helps and let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.